The temperature of our environment is constantly changing. So what happens to our body's temperature? To investigate, Jim is being fitted with a special ear probe. It's connected to a digital thermometer and measures his internal or core temperature. It's just over 36 Celsius. A similar device measures the temperature of his skin. His skin temperature is lower. At the moment, it's just over 30 Celsius. Put him in a room where the temperature is a sweltering 40 Celsius and we'll see what happens. Viewed through a thermal imager, cold spots, like his hands and nose, show up as blue or black. The warm surroundings are orange and yellow. The ear and skin probes are connected up. Then it's time to sit back and relax. It doesn't take long for Jim's skin temperature to increase. After just four minutes, it's already 35 Celsius and will keep on rising. But deep inside, Jim's core temperature remains more steady. It's risen by just one degree. This water bath is icy cold. What do you think will happen to the temperature of the skin on Jim's arm? Skin temperature can vary over a wide range, depending on its environment. But your core temperature hardly varies at all. To stay healthy, it should be between 36 and 38 degrees C. When you exercise, heat energy from your muscles warms you up. To prevent your core temperature from rising, this excess heat energy has to be lost. The skin plays a vital role. When the body is trying to lose heat, the blood capillaries in the skin dilate, they get wider. This allows more blood to flow through them and the skin takes on a redder appearance. Heat is lost to the surroundings by radiation. Sweating also cools the body down. Sweat is secreted from glands onto the skin's surface. As it evaporates, it takes energy from the skin, allowing the body to lose heat. This time our subject is sitting in a cold room. It's less than 10 Celsius. A large fan blowing out cold air will cool him down even more. When Jim is cold, his skin looks pale in colour and there's no sign of sweat. His skin temperature begins to fall and it isn't long before he begins to shiver. When it's cold, Blood vessels in your skin constrict, so less heat is lost from the blood. No sweat is produced, but your hair stands on end, giving you goosebumps. Despite the cold, Jim keeps warm inside. His core temperature is still 36 Celsius. How do goosebumps and shivering help keep his core temperature steady? Water is essential for life. We take it in mainly by drinking and eating.
But as well as gaining it, the body also loses it. You breathe out water vapour. And water vapour evaporates from your skin. It's most noticeable when you sweat. More obviously, you lose water through urine and faeces. But despite these daily gains and losses, the body works hard to keep its internal body fluids at a constant concentration. The kidneys play an important role, producing more or less urine depending on how much water you've gained or lost. As well as sweating profusely for the past couple of hours, Lisa has had nothing to drink since yesterday. By now, she'll be extremely dehydrated. One obvious sign is that she's producing very little urine, and it's dark in colour. On the other hand, Joanne has taken in lots of liquid over the past few hours. Her urine is plentiful and very pale. Her body is losing water, which means that she must be fully hydrated. The kidneys regulate the amount of urine produced. It's their job to keep body fluids, like your blood, at a constant volume and concentration. Blood flows in through the renal artery and out through the renal vein. Inside the kidney are millions of microscopic devices called nephrons. Blood entering each nephron is filtered. Most of its fluid content, represented here as yellow, passes into the nephron tube. As it trickles down, exactly the right amount of water is taken back to give the blood its correct volume. The remaining waste solution passes out as urine. So what will happen to Lisa and Joanne's urine levels if they both drink a litre of water? They continue to give samples every half hour. Lisa's urine is gradually getting paler, but she's still producing less than Joanne. In just two hours, Joanne has lost nearly all the water she took in. Her kidneys are getting rid of any excess fluid. When she drank a large quantity of water, her body fluid increased. This excess fluid appears in the blood. When it reaches the kidney, very little is reabsorbed into the bloodstream. Most of the water passes out as urine, bringing the blood volume back to normal. So if you're dehydrated, what's happening inside your kidneys? When the body digests food, it breaks down complex carbohydrates into smaller molecules. The simplest carbohydrate is glucose, a type of sugar. Glucose quickly passes into the bloodstream. It's a vital fuel because it's the only energy source that could be used by cells in the brain and nervous system. A spot of blood on a special indicator is all that's needed to measure the amount of sugar in the blood. These two people haven't eaten since yesterday. For both, the concentration of glucose in their blood is just over 5 millimoles per litre. So what will happen after they consume a litre of fruit juice loaded with 100 grams of glucose? <music> 
just 15 minutes later and their blood sugar has increased to around 8 millimoles per litre. To find out how physical activity affects glucose levels, one of our subjects gets on an exercise bike while the other sits still and relaxes. Half an hour later and their glucose levels are tested again. Our cyclist's sugar level has already fallen from 8.3 to 5. Even though a large amount of glucose has been ingested, it seems to have disappeared. The blood sugar level of our inactive subject is falling too. The body is regulating the amount of glucose in the blood. the organs involved are the liver and the pancreas. The liver is reddish-brown in colour and is the largest organ inside the body. The pancreas produces enzymes and hormones. If your blood is rich in glucose, it stimulates the pancreas to release a hormone called insulin. Insulin makes the liver remove the glucose and store it as a carbohydrate called glycogen, reducing the amount of sugar in the blood. Vigorous exercise also affects the level of glucose in your blood. When your muscles are working hard, they're using glucose as a source of energy. The blood sugar level of our magazine reader rises and falls gently. The bike rider's sugar level falls more dramatically. But what if he kept on going? What would happen if too much glucose was removed? When the blood contains too little glucose, the pancreas releases a hormone called glucagon. This makes the liver convert some of its stored glycogen into glucose and increases the blood sugar content, bringing the glucose level back to normal. But not everyone is able to control their blood sugar level automatically. Donna is diabetic. In her case, that means she doesn't produce any insulin. At the moment, her blood sugar level is 5.9. What will happen when she consumes a glucose drink? Donna's blood sugar level reaches a peak and stays high for much longer. It's only slightly reduced as time goes by because she doesn't produce enough insulin. Her body can't regulate its blood sugar level automatically. If her glucose level rises too high or drops too low, it could be dangerous. But by injecting herself with insulin at the right time and by eating a carefully controlled diet, Donna can regulate her blood sugar within safe and healthy limits.